Hello and welcome to this edition of SMB Connect Spotlight. Today we have Sarita Chohan, a found, uh, founder of Evoke Inspiring Life, an organization working for facilitating women uh, who are aspiring to become entrepreneurs, helping them uh, in their startup called Fast Writers Network and Communication Private Limited. Uh, Sarita has been an entrepreneur, a keynote speaker, international trainer for the past 15 years. Have received uh, many awards. Uh, is uh, also rated among the top uh, 51 influential women in Delhi and NCR. Winner of Ex Ex Exceptional Women's uh, Woman of Excellence Award 2018 from the uh, Women Economic Forum. She was also host and an expert on uh, She Leads Business, an internet TV platform for women entrepreneurs, and uh, uh, with an experience of training over 8,000 entrepreneurs. Uh, she is our guest today to share how uh, she is going. To, uh, she is helping businesses uh, in uh, coaching and consulting. So thanks, Arita, for uh, taking uh, this time out for uh, this uh, spotlight uh, series for from SMB Connect. I really appreciate uh, this. Uh, so that to start with, let me ask you: You're doing a lot of stuff. You are doing consulting. You are doing coaching. Uh, you have started writing. So which of this is the most satisfying for you? I would choose uh, coaching. I think I love coaching. Uh, it gives me immense satisfaction to actually, I think, help people, especially when I do one-to-one -one coaching. That's uh, something that I really love. I mean, if I have to really uh, give, a, give an order to what I love, uh, first would be coaching and then consulting uh, and writing. I think I, uh, I, have been writing for a while now it's just that now i have published a book otherwise i was writing article and uh, most of my you know social media posts i write them personally i know it's very uh, strange in today's world but i think i i love that uh, you know love telling my own stories and uh, how i can actually give personal touch to everything that i write most of my uh, social media posts are also written by me so uh, uh, good uh, uh, to hear that uh, because a lot of people have seen uh, use uh, uh, agencies to do the social media to promote themselves, but you're doing yourself something really commendable. And then I think a lot of people, uh, people who are uh, in the business of consulting should start doing that. Uh, now let me ask this question regarding the two books which you recently launched and uh, published. Uh, now you said you've been writing articles. So what made you think to, to go ahead and start uh, putting everything in one place and publishing it so um as i said i've been writing i think i already had 10 publications in uh, last couple of years which obviously were not books but they were either white papers recommendation paper research papers or uh, policy papers uh, plus two books that i directed uh, where the author was someone else um Book writing came into place uh, when i realized that a lot of people cannot afford coaching and i have this beautiful nine step strategy system that i have been teaching to people who want to become entrepreneurs or who are in their early journey like they're running their small businesses but they want to scale up so i have been working with them and i teach them a nine step uh, strategy system uh, and i realize a lot of people might take help out of that system and they cannot pay so i thought you know why not convert that system into a book which people can afford and then they can start their businesses uh, and uh, you know succeed in their uh, small and medium businesses so 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 is this book available uh, free of cost or you is uh, you are putting it uh, where is it available first and foremost let me ask is it available so it's available on amazon uh, both the kindle version and the paperback uh, it is also available on notion press uh, uh, paperback uh, version um, it is it is nominally charged uh, because I again uh, there is one thought that I always uh, have seen you know becoming uh, true uh, which is uh, people do not value what is free. So Absolutely. I had offered my book for free as a promotional measure uh, on New Year uh, when I was launching my first volume. It was all free. A lot of people downloaded and even my second book was free for a few days. Uh, uh, for people who really are committed and who were like, you know, okay, we, we just want to read. They were waiting. Some of them are actually waiting for the book to be released. And I was very happy that within a few days, uh, more than 200 copies were downloaded of Kindle version. But after that, it is now paid. 
Very nominally. It makes sense to have some kind of a value towards it. Otherwise, people don't uh, consider this as, as something which is important. And, and so let us start and talk about your first book, uh, which you, where you're talking about the nine steps, to, uh, nine step strategies uh, to start up a, a fail-proof business. Let me understand and please share what is the uh, what is there the gist of this in this particular book. What is the takeaway from uh, for for people to when they read this book? Yeah, so this book is divided into three volumes. So first two volumes are out, volume one and volume two. So this nine step st uh, system, I am covering first three steps in the first volume then the fourth fifth sixth steps is covered in the second volume and then the last three steps would be covered in the upcoming volume which is volume three and the reason why this is this has come in volume is because there is information you know a uh, lot of information already available on google and websites but when you put in a systematic manner yet if you you know give all the information at one go to people they often get confused or they do not read through that's another experience of mine i i believe 90 percent of the books people purchase they don't read and this is i mean more than 75 percent people they don't read 90 percent of the books that they have purchased so i try to make small books which people can read easily and get more value even if the content is slightly less than an average book which is 200 to 50 pages book people lose their interest and when you write a, when you read a book which has less pages it, these are one one and a half hour read where you can actually get a lot of value from those steps that i have discovered and i've seen people uh, following them and becoming successful so uh, if i have to give a gist of the book it would be just i think small steps that you take in a very very systematic manner that can help you achieve more business success than actually you know thinking about doing uh, taking a lot of uh, marketing using marketing tools or strategies or writing a plan where you know which doesn't work so in my book i have actually um, given all those tools and strategies that you need within those few steps that you take and it's like the the entire system for example if i have not started what is most important for me as a person it is the idea how do i actually put one idea or pick one idea and put it into business you know convert a business so the first volume was about uh, um, shaping your idea giving a shape to your idea how to pick one idea from where to pick uh, all that information is available and how to give that a shape and then the second volume is all about how do you become you know how do you take a product to market so now i have an idea after you read my first volume you will know what idea are you going to pick as business now how do you make a pro prototype and then convert you know that prototype goes to market and become successful that is all about uh, uh, second volume and in the third volume i would be coming up with the strategic part of it how do you market and you know after you have gone to market how do you scale it up how do you make it big how do you make sure that people keep on buying it so marketing strategy your financial management and all that would be part of one I think this looks very interesting, and and, and that the way you talked about to keep this uh, uh, the volume of the pages to be less is as really really appreciable because and my personal experience, uh, you have a book which is uh, until it's very interesting. You don't like to read a book which is around 300 500 page, but if you read a book like One Minute Manager, which is around 35 to 50 pages, and you have to finish it off, and you can implement a lot of stuff. So I think it's a good thought, and I think uh, it's good that uh, people who are may not be readers uh, or, 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 or voracious readers will uh, take up to this particular book from yours and uh, maybe use it uh, to implement in some of their things in their personal life or businesses. Now, Sarita, uh, 2021 or 2022 or 2020 was a, a year of pandemic. Uh, it has has a lot of impact, uh, adverse uh, effect to. Uh, businesses, entrepreneurs. Uh, you've been working with a lot of women entrepreneurs per, uh, per se. Uh, is it more difficult for a woman entrepreneur or is it the same? Uh, because uh, usually we see uh, uh, the women are most, mo mo much more resilient. But what is your personal uh, experience uh, working with all these women entrepreneurs? How did uh, uh, the pandemic uh, affected them? 
Yeah, so uh, I think pandemic has affected a lot of businesses, especially those who were mainly running offline. Okay, uh, they were largely impacted uh, from infrastructure to travel industry. And they've gone for toss, but then there are businesses who are completely running. So when we say travel, travel was partially online, and then travel is an experience. So the physical experience of it was offline. So they are they are affected. But then those businesses which are completely online, like e-commerce, like you know online tuition, online teaching, those are slightly less affected. Now coming to the questions about uh, women entrepreneurs. Uh, I'll say both yes and no. Uh, yes, because uh, as women, we have, the, you know, the society says that there are some responsibilities and roles that have been defined for men and women. And when you are in, you know, a country, especially like India, people are quite rigid about those roles and responsibilities. So you could be a successful CEO of a company, and yet at home you are seen totally differently. And I've come across so many women who have, you know, either you have to just be straightforward leave those uh, you know thought processes behind not the responsibilities as men and women we have uh, we know and we are aware that what our responsibilities are there are some uh, biological or natural responsibilities that we have to we cannot you know shy away from them yet the thought process of you know how you should raise your kids how you should behave how should you you know you should wear certain clothes which you have to fight out and you have to really you know you have to become uh straightforward and say no this is what i can do this i can't do so those women who are able to actually uh go above that thought process and uh fight that out somehow are actually doing it successfully just like men there are some who are not so uh i won't say unfortunate but who are not so uh strong and again it's about their parenting their background and a lot of factors are there for them it is quite difficult because uh, they can't fight so if you can fight out that thought process and that system that have been there for so many years you can be successful uh, women are for that you know uh, we are seeing in every uh, business now they are coming it's not even now earlier in technology you'll find very few women entrepreneurs now you see they are succeeding everywhere but the uh, but the fact remains that you have to become that strong and you have to say when you want to say no you should say no a lot of time because of our upbringing because of our own value system we we can't say no or we can't we can't do things that we want to uh, but the only way out of that is to become that women that you want to be not care about uh, sometimes you know your, it could be your own parents and your own family which would be against you so if you can be that strong it's it's not so difficult you answer my question which is about to i uh, about to ask is uh, uh, though the entrepreneurship and the, the sort of startup culture is going uh, uh, is is there uh, in india and people are uh, uh, looking for uh, starting their own business but the challenges for a woman is much more difficult uh, is much higher uh, the visa with the counterpart and and uh, so if if you are a young uh, college student and uh, woman per se and keen to start an entrepreneurship what kind of uh, advice you would like to give it to them i think uh, first thing would be to be clear i mean have clarity about uh, running a business and clarity about that you really want it because it's not so easy a lot of uh, people both men and women uh, start a business because they feel it is easier than actually going for a job you know you have your own time and everything but business is not like that it's a 24 cross 7 responsibility and uh, if you really want to be you know uh, the next uh, entrepreneur who the world knows and who really want to be successful you really want uh, people to you know look at you and that is not a easy journey for an entrepreneur you know you can be in a job and be uh, be known and have all the fame that you want but if you are coming in business and that's something i also talk about in my book why not to become an entrepreneur so your reasons have to be right so have clarity for women i'll i'll definitely say this that when you are starting you know a lot of if you are experimenting it's fine that you have few years you experiment it works out you do it uh, if you are thinking that it is easier no uh, opportunities are equal for both men and women once you get married you have more responsibilities so you have to take that call also 
that it cannot be just one year two year four years you you will start it it's a choice you can always close it but then when you invest a lot of time you don't want to so have right. that clarity that you can do it uh you know for 24 cross 7 you can just think about it uh this is uh, this is easier for those who have that clarity that i want this this is what i choose i really want to be a, a you know source of income for other families just think beyond uh, yourself then you start a business business is not about you that clarity has to be there it's not about this is a very valuable point to that you think about the other people who are part of your team and think about how you can uh, ensure that everybody gets their dues uh, so sarita uh, uh, let me since you've been coaching a lot of people uh, so it's a lot like to would like to use this time and understand what is the kind of business advice you like to give entrepreneurs uh, understanding the current uh, 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 the environment where the healthcare uh, health and pandemic is looming over the businesses the decision making is is paused or or is delayed uh so how should one uh, plan for next 6 months or a year yeah if uh, they are already running a business yes all those who are already, yeah if you are already running a business i think uh, uh, this is a time where you must think about diversification uh, you know uh, there are a lot of opportunities which have come up right now so uh, rather than thinking about what you have lost and what is already gone it's gone you you know uh put your 25% of energy on recovering and 75% of uh, you know energy on diversification on finding new opportunities finding new solutions and using technology so uh, i think uh, a lot of people would have realized that going online uh, before pandemic hit has been a, a you know boon to them for example i will take my own example also i think it's before two years of uh, pandemic that i had my second daughter and i realized that actually uh, you know coaching uh, physical coaching is going to be difficult for me or consulting or visiting people so i think in 2018 itself while i have conceived my second child i have uh, begin my online coaching uh, you know putting my system partially online so since last two years i was completely um, online it was only meetings and events that i was going to and if need be i was going for offline trainings or coaching as well but since i had already moved my most of my clients online i had less difficulty when the pandemic hit so use technology uh, at that time a lot of uh, people would not have thought of going online or completely online so if you can uh, what i mean to say is just look at future of technology what new things are coming up in terms of technology if your business can use them you would already be prepared for any next disaster so uh, be prepared uh, for uh, what future has uh, that's the way to become an entrepreneur i think an entrepreneurship is not only about your product and your services it's about understanding your environment and predicting you know what's going to be the next uh, thing which you can take advantage of and uh, you know uh, not let your business be um, affected by that so that's my advice for people who are already running business so let me now ask about your business of uh, you have been running this uh, organization your first organization evoke uh, just tell me something about it how it's working and it's been a social enterprise i i understand so tell me what all you doing in that and how uh, it's impacting the life of people so evoke inspiring lives is a social enterprise that i have been running for now almost 5 years uh, the idea uh, was i mean that was my first uh, uh, company when i thought of my uh, own uh, ventures uh, after being in uh, you know job for 11 years working with who's who of industry you know working with people who are very successful i realized even though i had a lot of knowledge and uh, resources when i had to start my business i didn't know where to you know despite a uh, business economics background a uh, lot of uh, people that i knew you know so networking wise also i was good i knew a lot of people i knew how things work and uh, still i had uh, no knowledge being a woman uh, i was clueless so that's when the idea of evoke uh, came to my mind uh, my 
programs worked really well in my last job which was national institute for entrepreneurship and small business development and i thought i have a lot of uh, content to give to people i know uh, how things work out i know how schemes work out so that was the idea behind the book i used all that information i started passing it on to women for free so that's how it began i Uh, started with free seminars for women who wanted to understand how the ecosystem works where to go when you are just thinking of starting a business if you are thinking of scaling up where to go what uh, you know what is available resources wise and how do i need to even prepare myself mentally and uh, you know technically so that's how it all began and uh, i do free trainings from evoke uh, free webinars and free seminars for even faculties and uh, 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 you know college students uh, it's all free i, I charge very really nominally when they really want to venture you know there some people who would uh, get that knowledge and they say okay we want to do it so i charge them nominally to start their businesses that's the yeah, that's a very nice uh, way to start and as a very commendable job you're doing uh now we are coming towards end of the session uh, time is come is a sense so let me ask this question this is a very personal to go to question to you uh now you've been uh, and you talked about that in your last a few comments so you've been uh, running business for last 10 to 15 years you have two kids as you say you have a family managing that is definitely takes a lot of it so how are you doing it what is your work life balance and how Uh, which can be uh, be a good uh, thought for a good good inspiration for people to manage both yeah uh, i think uh, it's a it's a wonderful question uh, to be especially i think if there are women who are listening to uh, us right now especially those who are not yet married or who have just married i think women have this uh, somewhere fear you know our whole system even you know if you see corporate world or the business world is made so that women are made to believe that uh, you cannot uh, you know you cannot have kids if you want to really be successful whether it is your career or it's your business i think uh, somewhere i i believe that you know it's it's a parallel journey you know you have to uh, understand that if you want it it is not going to be easy yet it's not so difficult if you have the right tools right mindset so i will say that how i manage is one i think it is about my uh, mindset and uh, both skill set which is i believe you know just like in a business you need system you can't be there physically all the time and you know if you really want to be that you will always be a small small business if you just want to be there and same goes for your family if as a women you feel that things cannot work without you then you cannot have a successful career or a business so you have to develop system and you have to have that mindset so that's how i also manage uh, my business or my work and my kids i have a joint family lot of uh, responsibilities and especially i have two daughters uh, who are growing one is 2 and one is 10 and uh, uh, people may feel you know uh, why have a baby at such a big gap it is complete it was my complete you know it is my choice where i when i want to have and i never had that fear that if i have a child now i am going to lose lot of my business lot of my clients so somewhere i want women to understand that these are parallel uh, journeys uh, i think if you if you just let go of what people think of you you know how society will judge you you can manage them both beautifully uh, these are the goals are set by you the uh, timelines are decided by you whether it is to have your child or have your business so somewhere i think uh, i believe we have to just break our own uh, you know uh, beliefs about how kids should be raised how business should be run whether you can do it so i i believe everything is possible and that's how i do it and i i have a full system for my home as i have for my business great i think that's something really uh, nice way to end this a full system for home and in office i think if you put process and system in place have uh, priorities set i think my life is much easier and your own life and your own business is a good uh, example for people to understand and how to run this so thank you sarita for uh, being part of uh, this uh, session of uh, smp kind spotlight i really appreciate uh, your time and i hope i hope uh, people will uh, like to uh, uh, to connect with you so uh, based on uh, the discussion we have and if they uh, should also read uh, the books which you have come out uh, and and get inspiration from them so thank you very much
thank you so much for having me i thoroughly enjoyed it and yes if people have any question and they want to buy my book they are available on amazon idea to empire volume 1 and 2 thank you so much i i really uh, had a good time so this brings to the end of today's edition of smb connect spotlight i hope you liked it please uh, share your views comment uh, on uh, uh, this particular video the five best comments will get a signed copy of the book from sarita also like us subscribe to our channels follow us on our various social media and connect with us if you need any kind of mentoring and knowledge related uh, issues for your businesses thank you this is sandeepan ray from smb connect